All right, forensic students, today is the last lesson in our forensic anthropology series. So this is lesson four, um, and we're going to talk specifically about long bones in the human body and how long bones, when they're discovered at a crime scene, can help determine clues about a person, uh, mainly the height of the person. So we know that skeletal remains, when they're found, are treated as evidence in a crime scene. So the crime scene is going to be secured, it's going to be processed, and oftentimes a forensic anthropologist is going to be called in to help answer questions. Some of those questions are going to be, are these bones human? If so, how old was this person? What was this person's biological ancestral background? Were they male? Were they female? How tall were they? Uh, what sort of lifestyle did they have while they were alive? Uh, and ultimately, what was their cause of death? So forensic anthropologists are highly skilled at excavating and analyzing human remains. Typically, field investigators are not. So they're going to call in the assistance of the forensic anthropologist to help answer some of those questions. So, so far, we have talked about the skull uh, and we know a person's sex and ancestry can be determined using features of the skull. Um, age can be determined by or estimated by using the cranial sutures. We also know that we can use characteristics of the skull to determine whether someone is male or female. So we could look at brow ridges, the shape of the mandible, um, the shape of the eye orbitals, or the texture of the nuchal crest. Uh, to get an idea as to whether a person's male or female. And if you need to go back and watch the skull lesson, the forensic anthropology skull lesson, uh, make sure that you do that. We also in the last lesson talked about the pelvic bone and how it can be used to determine the sex of an individual. So we can look at and compare the ilium of a person's pelvis. Uh, we can measure the subpubic angle. Remember, for males, it's going to be an acute angle, whereas females are going to have an obtuse angle. Uh, we can also look at the size and the shape of the pelvic cavity to determine if skeletal remains, specifically the pelvic bone, um, is male or female. Now, today what we're going to do is we are going to get into long bones. Um, so long bones can give an estimation to a person's height. And so if you have not already done so, I want you to, if you're one of my students, you have this worksheet, I want you to take a look at the web quest, complete this first. Just like with the skull and the pelvic bone, it's important for you to get an idea of the long bones in the body before we start with the lesson. So if you haven't already done the web quest, take a second to do that and then join us back in the video. If you've already completed this, then we'll just continue on. So throughout a human's lifetime, bones are always being produced, repaired, broken down. And as a result, bones increase in length until the growth plate is what we call ossified or hardened. Now this happens to about age 30. And then uh, at about age 30, the process begins to reverse. Bones are actually going to break down faster than they're built. So we can use the growth and development of the long bones in the body to help determine a lot of information. And one of those specific pieces of information that we're going to talk about today is height. Um, so if you'll take a look at this, this image, this is a picture of a Roman skull. Um, and anthropologists were able to determine clues uh, about this person based on their teeth. So they noticed that there was a lot of calcium buildup on the teeth, and so that gave a clue as to the way this person lived when they were alive. Um, and they were able to determine this person had poor dental hygiene. Um, so we know the skull, the pelvic bone, long bones in the body, skeletal remains in general can be used to identify um, a biological profile. So sex or age, um, height, or ancestry, but it can also be used to determine uh, how the person lived or how the person died. All right, so long bones in the body, um, and by long bones, we are referring to bones such as the humerus, the radius, the ulna, the femur, and the tibia. So here you have a chart where you can see what those different bones look like. Uh, they can be used to estimate height. Now this is an estimate, it is not exact. 
Sometimes it's accurate and sometimes it is not. But again, in forensics, it provides another clue uh, that could help investigators. So measuring these long bones can give clues as to the height of a person. And the most accurate way to measure height is by using a person's femur. Uh, and that's the bone that runs from your hip to your knee. Uh, to get the most accurate estimation of height, it's also important to have other clues or other information as, um, for example, ancestral background uh, and the sex of a person. So you can see here, and I'm going to have, it's hard to tell, um, but you can see this chart here in, a, in another slide over, I'm going to have this magnified so it'll be easier to see. Um, but I have provided you with this chart. Uh, so we have different long bones in the body. We have information such, such as ancestry, and then we have uh, different equations for male versus female. And so all of that information is going to be helpful when we're trying to determine the height of an individual. So to make it easier, I've supplied you with the height calculation chart, and we are going to use this height calculation chart uh, along with some scenarios to help determine the height of a person. So let's do some practice problems because at the end of the lesson, I'm going to turn you loose with some, some problems. Uh, I'm going to give you some information. You're going to use that information in conjunction with the height calculation chart uh, to determine the height of an unknown bone um, or an unknown person. All right, so here is our first practice problem. The radius of an Asian male was found in the woods next to an abandoned house. Investigators measured the radius at 32 centimeters, and what's, we want to know the approximate height of the deceased. All right, so we've got a lot of information there. First, we've got 32 centimeters as the length of the radius. So we have a place on our chart that gives us um, a formula for radius. We also know that this, this individual is an Asian male, so we're going to use this formula, 3.54 times the length of the radius, and then we're going to add 82 centimeters to that. Um, so when I plug that in, I get 113.28. Then I'm going to add 82 to that uh, for a total height of 195.28 centimeters. Um, so the radius is a long bone in the forearm. And so we were able to use that to determine that this person is approximately uh, six foot four inches. All right, let's do another practice problem. All right, so we have the femur of an African female, uh, and their femur measured 43 centimeters. So if I want to know approximate height, uh, I'm going to find femur, and then we know we have African as the ancestry. 2.28 times the length plus 59.76 is the formula that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to just plug and play. It's really simple. Uh, and I'm going to start by multiplying 2.28 times 43. That's going to give me 98.04. Then I'm going to add another 59.76 to this uh, for a total height of 157.8 centimeters. Uh, and that's roughly about five foot two inches, maybe five foot three inches. All right, so use that chart. Um, you should have this worksheet. You're going to go through and just find the approximate height of these individuals. I've given you some clues there. You'll use that in conjunction with this chart. Um, you can always, if you don't have this chart, you can always just pause the video here and use the one that I have on the screen. Um, and then I will see you in the next lesson.